Ah, uh, yeah, it says live on Facebook now. Yeah. Okie yeah. dokie. All right. Then we shall start. There's a little bit of a lag on, on my Facebook, but yeah, if we're live, we're live. Cool. We are live. We are live. Hey. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another juicy after church tea time. This time we'll be talking about the sermon about evil and how to overcome it. And so, yeah, I just want to open, you know, it up to all of our participants. Um, today we have Isaiah and me, of course, and we have Susie Puga, Lisi Mappas, and we have Adetaji Jenkins here with us to discuss this sermon. So welcome everybody. And yeah, so let's just go. What did mm -hmm. you guys take from the sermon the most or what stood out? I, I am still um, like really integrating what Jeff said about how your, your brother, like, you know, cannot actually offer you a tack and is only ever giving you a gift. Um, and it had me reevaluating like my whole past week, <laughs> like basically, um, and all the ways I was being like gifted and, and not attacked in any way or not, no love was held back from me. Um, and I really like that. I want to take that and I really want to deeply integrate it and carry it forward as I move through everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. I just love how passionate um, Jeff and Shlia and like everyone, like Adam and Brienne, you saw are mm -hmm. so just so passionate about this because it is, um, you know, it's how we end and as well as compassion, right? It's how we end the suffering within ourselves and in our brother. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. um, it's so powerful and it really shows how powerful we are as children of God just to like, that's how powerful your attention is, you know, take it away from, from ego or from um, anything that isn't God. And it just d dissolves, it disappears. Mm -hmm. And it just shows how um, powerful your attention is. And when you focus on God and the truth and on love, like that's what, that's what expands then, you know, that's what prevails. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked um, when Jeff and Shalia said that evil was present in like the smallest of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it tries to like coerce you into drama or violence or feeling bad. And it's like, wow, you know, like anytime I feel bad, there's, there's evil present there, right? And we know it's an illusion, but I'm choosing evil in some way when, whenever I allow myself to feel bad or for any, for any reason. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it, in the smallest of things, like um, uh, just, you know, even, even like technological mishaps, right? Like, like they're, they're like, oh, that's annoying. But being um, kind of numb to when you feel annoyed or just accepting being annoyed as normal, like that's, that's not okay. You know, everything can be healed. Um, with love and so I really really liked that um, and I, I like you Susie like I was I was noticing this week where I was kind of allowing part of me to get drawn into drama right. and it's like it's subtle right like I know I'm not going to go out and gossip and um, cause a scene and have like fist fights or anything that <laughs> I'm not going to do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but like just any time there's like this this upset and I I can tell because I'm like furrowing my brow or you know whatever it is mm -hmm. and um that's you know giving attention to the illusion and and then I've been catching it so much more frequently recently um realizing like wow <laughs> I really can um make choices here I really am a divine being so yeah yeah I was um I was like kind of like writing down some thoughts right after the sermon right 
uh, and like what both you and Isaiah were getting at is like, there's like, you can just say no, like when you experience that, you know, like misery or evil, you can just like, you know, put a boundary there basically and say, this is, this is not me <laughs> because it's, it's not right. There's no evil within you. And so you can just deny that, um, and love yourself there. And, and that's, it's just so powerful that it's very simple, mm-hmm. very simple to transform your reality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm also like really curious about, you know, saying no to the illusion versus, um, you know, Jeff and Shalia were saying that you, you don't ignore it. You don't pretend that it's not mm-hmm. there. Like we can't pretend that what's going on in our world and like current events isn't mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. And so it's, but it's not following the temptation down the rabbit hole where it's telling you that God's not real. Like, mm-hmm. like look in our world, like what's happening with um, everything surrounding it in the United States, like everything about race relations, you don't turn your head and say that's not happening because it is, but you don't allow it to um, have any power. It's a different, different mm-hmm. thing. I know that Jeff and Julia expressed that in several different ways in the sermon. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to jump in on that since you just brought it up. Uh, there was something that uh, Jeff said where he said um, evil wants you to see it as evil and be upset about it and that e- and that evil separates you from God and you can pretty much never be harmed. Uh, this was a block that I recently worked through. Uh, Lisi, it's cool to talk about it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there was a recent block that I was working through in regards to um, racism. And it was pretty much my own separation consciousness. A uh, little, bit, little bit of a, ba- a backstory. When I first joined TFU, when I was led to join TFU, there was a thought in you know, the back of my mind when I first saw the website, it said, and I I said to myself, how come there aren't any black couples in Harmony Swing down here? And I I gave it attention, but I didn't really think too much on it because that's that's not where my mind is and that's not who I am. So I just said, okay, just go through with it. Like, yeah, I saw it, but like, okay, it's not that, it's not that big of a deal. I'm not, I'm not, it's not, nah. So, went through with it and then there were I'm gonna say this part step by step and make sure I'm coming from a place of love with this. There were some things that I saw in the forum that really didn't rub me the right way, but I think it was because of what I was brought up with and what I was programmed with, I, I saw in the forum, this, is, this was in the beginning, and this was why I, okay, say this part first. In the beginning in the forum, there were some, there were some things that I saw that I didn't, that didn't rub me the right way. And what I mean by that is a lot of people in the forum had the comfortability to use the term loosely ghetto. And it was in a way that was kind of knocking it down really. Because obviously I, I know now that when we when we're referring to the word ghetto, it means in the sense of poor and poverty. Okay. <laughs> I guess that was a good sign. So I mean I know it means of poor and poverty. That just gave me the, the that 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 was the accuracy. Yeah. But exactly. in my yeah, but in my culture, what that means is home for us, because it was a way where we could express our own authenticity that not everyone was going to understand. But I, obviously, I know that ghetto 
come ghetto has a really bad tag along with it because you know in Europe uh, the Jewish communities were named ghetto because that's what the Nazis transformed the, tra the concentration camps into. But with my with my culture, I didn't really see it as a bad thing, and I kind and kind of and going back to what Jeff said, evil wants you to see it as evil and be upset about it. And I was upset about that a little bit because I didn't really see it as a reason for it to knock it down. And with that, made me not want to really associate in the forum. And again, it was my own consciousness because with me doing that, I was also separating myself from God and not really putting my trust in him because I was really uncomfortable in the place where I was. And honestly, I didn't even know that there were any people of color in uh, TFU until I saw Yurene's article about healing racism. And when Lisi brought it up to me on Friday when we were doing our when we were doing our uh, workshop, I didn't realize that that was such a big block because that was also separating me from, from God as well. And that was not helping me, that wasn't helping me not trust what God was leading me to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, again, I ignored it, but I didn't give it that much power. But in the back of my mind, I was giving it power because it was, it was, keeping, it was giving me the mm -hmm. consciousness of separation. Yeah. And so when Jeff and Shalia were sharing that every time our brother presents us with a gift that, you know, an upset or some of us call it, you know, an upset, like what you were describing, it's an opportunity for you to love yourself there and heal it. And hey, look where you are right now. Like, so how do you feel now about um, having, having looked at that and received that in a new way and transmuting it in your heart? It, I feel, it makes me feel not alone anymore. Because before, obviously, you know, going back to what I said, I did feel alone, which is why I didn't participate that much in the forum. I mean, obviously, me and you were doing our inner work, and I wasn't, and there was a point where I lost my Facebook profile because I had to heal a block, but I was still, you know, doing what I had to do with you and for mm -hmm. myself. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, now it's just, I feel that 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 feeling of loneliness is gone now. Good, yeah. Because, it's, like Jeff and Shalia said, the step four, like where you where you bring love there, it's so powerful. Like none of that other, all of that you don't you don't you don't say, oh no, that that didn't happen. It, things happen, but they're they don't hold any weight in your heart. Like they don't they don't serve you. They don't love you they invite you to love yourself. And that's, that's awesome. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm glad that you brought that up. And um, I mean, that's just one of the many gifts that um, God is giving you and giving us and our community um, to, to really go deeper there. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'm just, you know, like, I was thinking about how, um, what Jeff's, what you said, Deji, like really talks about what Jeff and Shalia said about how ego gets uncomfortable because it wants to hide. And, and when you expose something, like when you pull it out, it was like towards the end of the sermon, when you expose something and pull it out, um, it brings it to light. And you just brought something to light as well, right? Like, hey, by the way, you know, and, and it's really important to share. It's really important to express and share so that um, collectively we can um, bring everyone up and, and really give love to all these places. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was great. Yeah, that was really powerful. Thank you for sharing all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I've had a lot of um, healing myself around like racism and stuff, but for me, like, fear and programming I had around like people of color when I was growing up and um it was very I thought I thought of it as I thought of it as really strong um and I thought of it as something that I couldn't overcome I really wanted to 
Like in college, I, I learned more about um, race and ethnic studies. You know, I majored in that. And I really wanted to overcome those feelings inside of myself, you know, but, you know, we weren't doing, we weren't, I was making tiny steps maybe, you know, but yeah, until, you know, until I found TFU, there was a feeling of like, I don't think I can really get past this, you know, and so I should just um, forget about it, you know, like it's just a part of me, but that's not true. And um, it's in Twin Flames Universe, I first started, you know, healing that and I made really um, quick progress in that, you know, and I was able to feel a lot of, you know, comfort and peace where I just had been feeling really uncomfortable and like guilty too, you know, and um, yeah, it's the voice of ego that it's evil that tells you that, you know, I think uh, it's prevalent thought that like, People say like, well, we'll probably never overcome this or it'll take forever, you know, racism and people can't really change at past a certain point. And all that is just a lie because like, I felt like it wasn't possible for me to, for me to change and just like feel loving and accepting of, um, you know, not only my uh, black and brown brothers and sisters, but of myself too, you know, cause that's what it was reflecting. And, um, yeah, but I did. I just, every time it came up, I just healed it. And I'm, I am keep healing it with the mirror exercise. But now, yeah, you know, I've mostly overcome that, you know, block. But it's just like, yeah, no, nothing, no evil has power. And it's just like, it's bullshit to think, it's a sad thought to think that um, you couldn't overcome something, you know, or that you should hold on to guilt because of something. It's just like, that's never true you know, and it's, it's, you never have to do that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And people do give you gifts when they try to reel you into that or when they, you know, suggest that. And it's like, you know, like I had a, I had a former coworker comment on me something saying like, well, blah, blah, blah. How can you say this when you did this when you were a teacher? And I was like, damn girl, like you're holding on to something that happened like two years ago. You know, and I'm like, I'm doing the same thing and I'm still racking myself over the coals. And it's just like, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is just say no mm -hmm. and resolve that, yeah. you know? Yeah. I wanted to um, pipe up and read a couple of our comments from, um, from the comment section and then invite you, if you're watching this, to comment. Um, can you list some examples of your life when um, you notice that, e that ego or evil was clever, but love was intelligent. Um, but I'll go ahead and read the comments while you type. Um, Alexandra said, evil can be sneaky in drawing you in and making you give it power, and you find yourself spiraling. This is why what Jeff and Shalia shared about discipline and being aware and present is so important. Um, Oceana says, so wonderful to hear from you and to hear you share. Renato Nunez Gomez to Edita G. Thank you so much for sharing your story and your upset. What a gift to love ourselves here. So oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Definitely a gift. And it's, um, you know, I really, I really do want to talk about um, how ego, ego, just ego slash evil is really clever and tries to trick you. Um, it's not some external entity either. It's an, it's an illusion that we're buying into when we choose it, which, which is silly. But, um, you know, Jeff and Shalia said, evil offers you reprieve from, um, from your, you know, own, um, sorry, my handwriting. Let me just, <laughs> I was right because the, the words were coming in and it was just so wonder. I was like, whoa, hang on. Um. Yeah, it offers you reprieve from your own beratement, does not stop when you do what it says. You're its slave. You focus on it and you give it your attention. So you become a slave to ego. You do what ego evil says. And then you just have to kind of keep, you're like trapped in this loop. But you can easily get out of the loop with the mirror exercise. You can easily just say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to let you, you know, let, let the illusion um, 
take away my power because it, it has no power on God. It has no power on your divinity, just like they said. Um, and then they also said that you you can only um, participate in evil if you and your I'm paraphrasing here, but you and your mm -hmm. brother accept it. So, like, let's imagine that in this group, I started saying some flim flam about whatever, and, and all of you were like, you know, Arr? if if I'm um, like flim flaming away here, talking illusion this, illusion that, separation this, separation that, if you don't participate with that with me, you, you can actually. Um, shut it down like you can actually you know stand behind your truth stand behind stand with your truth in god um and kind of shut down the flim flam but it has nowhere to go like it, it wants to infect everything it doesn't have anywhere to go but it, i might like i might virus. choose not to yeah like i might choose not to listen <laughs> and and keep talking separation nonsense um but you can you can um, stand strong in your truth because it feels good and you you know you're safe to share your truth and it um you know ego, it's like ego needs other people to buy in mm -hmm. to survive um but it yeah. doesn't exist there's that <laughs> yeah. it's true it's like ego it's interesting i feel like ego needs like an attachment in order to to like you know be real or or, or like seem real and so that's why you know like two people have to agree that oh we're going to participate in evil right now um but you know it, it's such a lie and i feel like i feel like um another thing i wrote down is it seems like the the a synonym for evil is just lie like it's a lie of helplessness that you you can't transform what is before you or you can't be who you know yourself to be deep down at your core right uh which is love yeah yeah amen yeah i've experienced a lot of that it's funny because it's like the lie that you can't be who you are yeah mm -hmm. i think all of us have experienced that it's you know no person is separate and no community is separate. So we're all going through the same thing, but yeah, I've experienced that a lot, but yeah, nothing, you know, not even like, nothing like not your body, not um, your past or anything can keep you from, keep me from being, you know, who I am both, you know, as a, as a woman and as like a divine being, you know, nothing can stop it. And yeah, you know, it's that feeling that you're going after you know, I mean, it's just the desire to like feel good, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's, that's the, that's what you get when you say no to evil, you know, yeah. <laughs> and also so, yeah, you eventually you'll manifest that. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I want to share a story about when um, evil was being clever in, in my consciousness and then how I realized like it wasn't intelligent. It's um, I remember like right, right before Josh and I attained harmonious union, um, Josh told me like, no, I don't want to go to Toronto. And I was like, oh, okay, well that feels bad, but I guess I have to respect that, you know? And, um, it, it just felt, it felt bad. Like I was like, oh, shucks. Like, well, I feel like I don't have any power. I guess I don't have any power. And an ego, its cleverness was trying to, to make me buy into that. Like, you know, if, if I, um, chose to believe that, that lie that I had no power, um, and that I didn't get what I wanted, you know, I, I didn't get what I desired, um, that God didn't really want me to be with my twin flame or, you know, oh, I need to wait. Um, if I bought into that clever lie, I, I, ego was telling me that if I, if I waited and didn't, didn't claim my good, that I would be rewarded, but I never was. Right. I did that most of my life. I, I sat there and I waited for the one and, and said, oh, I must respect your boundary. But the boundary wasn't put there with love. It was put there through fear. Like it wasn't a loving boundary. It wasn't there to bring me deeper into a relationship. It was there to cause separation. So I chose to instead um, see that love was more intelligent. I felt into my heart. It was like, 
hey, no, I want to go to Toronto and, and I trust Jeff and Shalia and I trust what they say about Twin Flames and I make the choice to go to Toronto together. I, I, Josh, I bought you a ticket, you know? I was, I was okay. Like, I, I would be okay if he completely, you know, threw up his hands and said no. But in my heart, I was like, that's not going to happen because he's me because I know he's my Twin Flame and I trust God and I trust Jeff and Shalia because all the, re- the other stuff doesn't feel good. That's ego, you know? And so we, we drove to Toronto together. We had a whole bunch of opportunities where I received the temptation of evil. Like Josh's boss called, hey, you didn't tell us that you were cutting out of work. And I was like marrying, <clears throat> you know, ch- making my choices and really, really choosing the truth. That there's nothing that's going to stop us from going. Um, healed through that block, got to the border. He doesn't have his passport. And I was like, okay, all right, Oof, this is a big one. <laughs> should have, should have, um, something like I, we had, we had uh, talked about it beforehand, um, just forgotten, right? We were, we were 17 hours away in the car and we had just forgotten the passport. It was his birth certificate to cross the border, right? And I was mirroring, I, I heard the, the knock of ego, like, well, you'll just have to get a hotel in Buffalo or, you know, whatever it was, or Niagara and uh, like, mm. zoom in. Yeah. Like, so I heard that, but I was like, no. And I mirrored and I, um, I said like, okay, God would never switch. Jeff and Shalia say a lot. Like God would never lead you to water without a pitcher. Like mm-hmm. whatever happened in this situation. Yes. We should have brought the, but, you know, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to not wear my seatbelt and just expect to mirror away accidents, right? But in this moment, it gave me an opportunity to really choose God and to really surrender and to really say, like, I trust you, God. I trust that you're going to carry me through. And so the customs officers brought us inside. We sat down and met with them. I showed them our invitations to the workshop. Um, we had our driver's licenses. I had my passport. I was the driver and they they let us through like we we had to answer a couple questions and they let us through and that was I'm just getting a little emotional um that was just choosing love and choosing like to honor God you know and I'm not saying that um that it was right that we had forgotten the past the birth certificate but what I'm saying is I, I chose the most loving thing in my heart rather than evil, rather than the thing that didn't feel good or the mediocre. And I'm do I'm continuing to do that, right? Like it doesn't feel good to me to to see our um, black brothers and sisters not joining us here. And I know they will be here because I claim that in my heart, right? Like I I know that I don't choose the the evil that's saying oh. We're going to be separate that, you know, that that's not, God isn't a race. God is not, doesn't have a race, mm-hmm. right? God, God's children are God's children. Um, so I, I know that we don't have to listen to that. Um, but I am, I'm curious about your stories. I know we have uh, quite a bit of time left. Like what, what are some times when you heard evil trying to be clever and like, when did you choose love and how did you do that? Um, Petra commented and just said, thank you, VC. Very healing what you share and how you didn't take uh, Ego's voice um, along the Toronto trip un- unfolding and chose love again and again. Mm. Yeah, it's really inspiring. That's a nail biter. It was. And you just chose love and that's very inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm going deeper there, you know, I. I choose not to have, you know, nail biter situations. Like I choose my, that was, yeah. you know, very beginning of HTFU. And um, as I deepen in the work, I see just how strong and stable God is and, and how, you know, God, God even wants more peace in, in my foundation. Like God doesn't want you to, you know, fly off the seat of your pants all the time. Like, but, but that was just an example. 
Um, yeah. Uh, Renato says, the power of a choice makes the evil go away instantly. We can choose light over darkness, love over fear, God over evil. Yeah. Um, one other topic that was brought up in the sermon was um, the poisoned honey. So we've got, you know, the ego can be clever, but love is intelligent. But what about the poisoned honey where... Um, has anyone ever offered you poisoned honey and how did you know that it was poisoned and what did you do about it? Mm. 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 Um, yeah, you have. I have, um, I have kind of a story on that. Um, right when I was really discovering Jeff and Shalia, um, and their work, right. And I was in the process of reading their book, Twin Flames, Finding Your Ultimate Lover. Um, and there was, uh, there was, oh, what, when, when was it? It was like February of like 2019, I think. Um, but anyways, I was still in school and college. And so there was like prep basically going on for the next semester. So people were like offering you like internships or this position or that position. Um, and, but reading that book was helping me get very clear on what I, what I wanted, right? Um, and I had a, a friend come to me, a friend who like, you could, could say, I tried to like, you know, substitute him for my twin flame at one point, like before I discovered this work. Um, and he was going to be in charge of like, like the, the student government essentially, uh, at my school. And he said, Hey, like, I want to give you this position. Like, I think you'd be really good. Um, you don't have to do any work because I sign off on your work. So you can just do whatever you want. And I would just sign off and you'd get paid. Um, and we can, then he says, and you could be a power couple with me. And I was like, uh, <laughs> and I, I feel like that was poison honey because, um, like previous versions of myself would have been really attracted to that and said, oh yeah, I, I like having power, right? Oh, over people and over things um and I you know want to be feel special and like I don't have to do work and I can you know just sit here and make decisions and everything's fine um but it it also like you know reading that book while simultaneously having that offer just seemed really clear to me that like that was not my path like I didn't actually care about what was going on and the the work like the meat of the work that they were doing like old Susie would have just wanted the position, right? Because it's like very surface level satisfying, right? Uh, satisfies the ego, essentially, not the core of who I am, not my heart. Um, and so I said, no, I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, <laughs> like, even though it's like free, free money, um, I'm not going to do that. And um, he persisted and was like, you, you should, like, I really don't want to go and look for someone else. And I was like, no, no, I'm fine. And he was like, oh, and then he follows it up with like, I knew you'd probably say no. And I was like, oh, why are you asking? Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's like the, the example that comes to mind for me for poisoned honey um, and saying no there. Good. And you get more, you know, more love by choosing the real honey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was actually, that event was followed up with a weekend of, like, volunteering with my twin flame for, like, two straight days, so. Nice. Mm hmm I have somewhat of a story related to that, but not entirely, but I'll see if I can relate it. Okay, so um, <laughs> a, part of, a part of my journey that I didn't know was a huge block was claiming my divine femininity. So when I completely healed it, and Jeff spoke about this in the Romance Attraction e-course, I didn't know that was a thing until I bought it and didn't realize, okay, so that's why that happened. When you are stepping into your divine femininity, you tend to magnetize different, I'm not gonna say divine masculines, or I, I guess just, I, I guess magnetize attention, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
That's what it was. So yeah, I've magnetized attention from someone that I knew since I was 19. And I thought for a second that maybe that this was my true twin flame, but it turns out it was just a soulmate situation. And I immediately jumped into it because you know, I hadn't spoken to my the person who is my true twin flame. I hadn't spoken to them in a very, very, very long time. And you know, I mean, shit, that male attention feels good. <laughs> so um, I was getting it and uh, yeah, I jumped into it, but it turns out it wasn't my, he, he wasn't my true twin flame. And there was a voice in my head like, no, stay with it. Like, no, stay in this. He's not gonna come back to you, this and that, this and that. And so I said, and so I didn't really, and plus also was taking me away from my inner work. It was stopping me from doing my inner work as well. So there was a time where me and this soulmate didn't speak for a few days. And then they came back saying, how can I fix this? How can I fix this? And I was like, I could have said, well, you could do this or I could just say like, end it and just continue doing my inner work. So that poison honey could have been, could have just, was that voice saying, no, keep it going, keep it going. You're gonna, like, you're gonna be happy, but I'm not gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, obviously I had to end that to continue doing my inner work, so. Yeah, that I could have taken it and kept it going, but no, I wanted. So, to how do you feel now that you made that choice? Feels good, because I would have been very miserable if I would have kept that going. Yeah, it, it's like empty. Yeah, and I actually tried to introduce yeah. them to TFU, but they said they would get into it, but I think they weren't really serious. They were just mm -hmm. talking shit. So, yeah, yeah, he wasn't serious, it, so I completely let that go. That's a really good example. That that's a, something that a lot of us face, or a lot of people before they come to Twin Flames Universe face, right? Um, that that's a perfect example. And um, the other one um, Adam shared was about you know substances, drugs, escaping. Like I think you hit the nail on the head, Deji, where you said, you know, it was taking you away from your inner work, which is which is really taking you away from God, because the inner work brings you into communion with God. So. Um, yeah, thank you. I wanted to share, um, Chrissy K wrote, uh, my favorite part of the service was Jeff speaking to the desire to always choose God. Until you wake up and choose to practice placing your attention on the divine, you will be miserable. You must wake up every part of your being to this by focusing only on the divine and being so stubborn, so stuck in the mud of the divine. Amen. How are you choosing that now? Are you focusing on the divine or your upsets? Beautiful. Thank you, Chrissy. That's beautiful. That's what Chrissy has been um, like working on me with, really disciplining me due to MAP. And um, Isaiah has been helping me too, you know, to not focus on the upsets and give all the focus and attention to the divine. Because to heal people, you have to, you know, be healed, right? And have like a, a clean consciousness, you know? Like you have to be somebody who says, you know, I'm not going to give any power to fear. And then you invite another person into that, you know, mm -hmm. and that feels really good. So yeah, you know, you have to make sure you have to be that and embody that. And that heals people Absolutely. basically when you yeah. invite people in. And yeah, and Isaiah, he knows this, but I must know this too because I was with Blake because <laughs> you were a practitioner already. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. but we're, our whole consciousness is moving more deeply into that. Yeah. I guess. But yeah. <laughs> yes, I know only, this too. Only standing in love. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. It also makes me really just so grateful for Jeff and Shlia too, because like along my, along the journey, like, I've need I needed someone who was rooted in love and mm -hmm. just stuck in the mud in love and that's them, you know, and they're just always someone that um, you can look to for that example and mm -hmm. for people who are always standing in love, standing with the truth. And um, God, it's so relieving. It's so relieving when you feel like uncertain or it's so relieving when, um, you know, maybe you don't feel really certain in like standing up for yourself or standing with love. Um, but then you can just like watch a class or like um, bring um, 
them into your consciousness and be like, no, like this is, this is right. And I choose love and I choose to stand with love. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just very grateful for um, that example. And that example allows us to grow into that and mm -hmm. all of us to do that for ourselves and extend that to everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I really, really like that analogy of being stubborn and stuck in the mud with God. Cause I, I think, <laughs> I think my stubbornness is the reason why I have HDFU. Cause I was always a stubborn person, right? Like <laughs> I was always really stubborn and, and I really feel like it, it's my greatest strength. Cause now I'm stubborn with God. Like I'm like God, right? Like no, nothing. And I might be stubborn and stuck on a, an ego pattern, but that's why I'm grateful to you to Jeff and to Leah and to the community for saying, Hey, like that stubbornness pointed over there. That's, that's ego over there. You're, you're sticking on that. Like be stuck in the mud with God. And when mm -hmm. someone shows you that you're stuck, stuck on not God, it's okay to receive and surrender and choose God. And I really, really like that. It really spoke to me too. Thank you, Chrissy, for sharing. And thank you, Isaiah and Sage too. Um, we have another comment. It's a great one um, from Oceana. I've had people offer me serious drugs in the past, but I felt and heard God's voice clearly guiding me towards love instead of taking the offer to poison honey. And even now I've been around people who try to tempt me into get shit face drunk with them and pressure me into doing it because it will be fun when I know what my truth is and stand in sobriety and not going to stray away from loving myself. Yeah, it really says a lot about a relationship when you feel like people feel like their relationship disappears when like you won't like get super drunk with them. Totally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to have those relationships and I said no. And mm -hmm. to that, because I was like, no, like, no, I have to wake up the next day and do things that I love and I don't want to be shit face drunk. And they're like, oh, come on. Where's the old, where's the old sage? Where's the old oh, that ego? <laughs> Ooh. And I was like, uh, she's, that was a lie, you know? Mm -hmm. God. I have um, like a, a kind of a fun follow-up to that. Uh, so the other night I was at a very, like very small, intimate wedding reception. Um, and, you know, of course, you know, people are having their drinks and stuff and I'm just talking to them. And one of my friends, like, friends, acquaintances looks over to me and is like, Susie, I still think of this one time where you just left the bar and you just told us I'm leaving. I'm tired. I want to wake up early. And you just left and you went home. And I really respect that because you had a boundary. <laughs> and, I was, and I was shocked. Um, I like didn't expect it just came out of the blue. This person turns to me and says that. Um, but it was nice because at the time I had just I had left because I wanted to, like, I just didn't feel guided to, to be out there anymore. They didn't, I wasn't feeling any value. Um, and so I left and I went home and I went to sleep. Um, but I, I did have like an upset where I was like, Oh, my friend's going to think I'm a jerk. And then I was like, no, you know, I got to be nice to myself first. And if someone thinks being kind to myself and, you know, respecting myself as being a jerk, well then, you know, see them on their way out. Um, but it, it was nice to like, see that someone else saw my action you know my light like choosing love and they internalize that for themselves too and realize you know hey like that's really cool I can do that too and so that was a fun little thing yeah mm -hmm. I see a comment from Renato during one year after the separation from my twin flame by poison my, my poison honey was meeting other people as a way to numb my feelings out as a distraction. And of course, my divine masculine reflected it back to me and this poison honey does not taste good. It was bringing me emptiness and guilt, but a choice is powerful to change our reality. I can relate, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, it feels so much better to like come, you know, off the hamster wheel of delusion and into truth with mm -hmm. God. And, you know, I, I remember Shalia saying many times, like, 
I have a God, you know, <laughs> like I have God and I, I have, I have it all. I don't need anything, nor can anything possibly come from the outside to make me feel good. It's, it's a complete illusion. Um, you don't have to complete Pete with illusion as well. Like illusion doesn't, it's, there's no competition there. Like it's not, I think Jeff and Shlia said it, whether it's not good and evil, there's only d the divine. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Does it, anybody else want to say anything? I think we're about almost finished. It was a really, really good dialogue. Hmm. Oh, that wasn't me. No, oh. <laughs> maybe that's the the ding. Like we had a great dialogue, and um, you know, keep it going in the comments too. And this mm -hmm. every service is just so powerful. Every service is always giving and um, really, really taking us deeper into more love and mm -hmm. really clarifying what love is. So, thanks everybody. Mm -hmm. I hope you have a great, great week, and we'll see you next time. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 -bye. Good